I loved taking things apart when I was a kid. My parents probably didn't love that. But really seeing how things are built and then be able to rebuild it, that's really interesting. It's a puzzle to solve. That's what got me really interested in biology, trying to understand the fundamental building blocks of cells and how do they work, how do they interact. Can we fix them when they go awry? Each one of our cells contains three billion letters. This is our DNA, and it provides the basic instruction for how to form our individual personality, our own physical traits. That process is, is just marvelous, it's amazing. But the human genome sequence is enormously complicated with billions or trillions of different possible ways that it could go wrong. These are called mutations and they can cause genetic diseases that affect people in devastating ways. The more I learned about genetic diseases, the more I thought, what if we can go into the DNA of a cell, take mutations that we find on the genome, and be able to correct that. So for Vung, when he first came to MIT, that was his big ambition, to figure out how to edit DNA. <laughs> because for all of human history, genetic disease has been a curse. The tragedy of genetic defects have been killing or crippling mankind for thousands of years. You could try to treat the symptoms, but fundamentally, if there was a problem in the DNA, it was basically hopeless. But the DNA molecule because finding and editing a particular piece of DNA is hard to do. Imagine you have a library with thousands of books. And somewhere in one of those books, there's a typo. What you need to do is find that typo and fix it. Because if you don't, possibly millions of people will die. That's what Fung was up against. So with genome editing, it has been done by other scientists before but we just couldn't do it in a very efficient and safe way. And so the goal was to make something that's easy to use and also be able to target many, many different genes across different cell types to address as many diseases as possible. That's really difficult. But when I started my lab, we set out to do that. So I remember one day I heard about a naturally occurring immune system in bacteria something called CRISPR systems, and it targets DNA to be able to recognize viruses. The more I learned about it, the more I realized that this could be a really powerful system to edit DNA in human cells. So with CRISPR, I felt like there is a possibility I can make it work. But biology is hard to predict, so you never really know but then by starting to apply the system in cells, I started to see that CRISPR can be programmed with a short RNA search string that will carry the mutation that you're trying to find in the genome in human cells. Once it's inside the cell, the CRISPR protein will search along the DNA and try to find the mutation. And when that matching happened, the protein will then go and cleave the DNA and replace that break in the DNA with non-disease causing DNA. A scientific breakthrough could revolutionize medicine and possibly cure genetic diseases. It's called CRISPR, and it could rid the world of HIV and cancer. So CRISPR is a very widely useful tool. It's being used in the development of new medicine and also in agriculture to improve crops. And I think those things will have a, a large impact on the world. So look, Fung is a pretty understated guy. But make no mistake, this work is absolutely huge. It's one of the biggest discoveries of our generation. Now we have, for the first time, the possibility of curing genetic disease, and that will save millions of lives. But it's beyond that. It's going to enable a whole new kind of research in biology. 
because now you can change a gene and that will help you to be able to understand the function of that gene. And so it's going to offer us the possibility of unraveling the very complicated genetic code that makes life work.